Hello, Spiral Out Podcast listeners. Big news for the podcast. Big news. This podcast has got its first official sponsor. Yes, somebody sponsored this podcast. Drum roll, please. Head on over to rockabilia.com. It's the coolest place on the internet to get all your officially licensed music merch. That's right, officially licensed. You can get tool shirts. You could get a perfect circle hoodie, uh, a deft home shirt. You could get a Metallica towel. You could get a sleep token sculpture, nine inch nails pins. Uh, you can turn your whole house into a music museum. So head on over to rockabilia.com and use the promo code spiral out to get 10% off your order. Again, rockabilia.com promo code spiral out. The podcast is honored to partner with Rockabilia. We are excited for the future. We are excited about new episodes and uh, it just kind of tickles uh, my fancy. So again, rockabilia.com promo code spiral out to get your uh, Metallica t-shirt or your tool shirt or a uh, ACDC towel or a Beatles blanket. Uh, they have a ton of cool stuff. I bought a Deftones poster the other day. And again, official tour poster. So uh, rockabilia.com. Thank you for listening. Spiral out. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Spiral Out Podcast. I'm your host, Chris West. And on today's episode, we have the very talented tattoo artist, Brad Billimo. Say hi, Brad. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> uh, Brad, Glad to be here. Thank you. Um, Brad, you do tattoos out of the East Coast somewhere, right? Yeah, I have a shop here in Florida. Florida? Uh, third Eye Tattoo. I didn't realize that was the name. That's an awesome name. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Brad, da- Brad does tattoos out of Florida. He also makes prints. He also collects tool posters behind him, if, if you can see, and other cool art. Uh, he's his, an artist in his, in his own right. And he also did something very interesting over the last three years, right? Uh, he wore a tool shirt every day, and, and today is around 800, right? Uh, seven, 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 actually. Nice. The uh, world record that I'm setting here. Just the, for fun. Just for fun. But so tell me. In a good time. Tell me how, um, how this tool shirt every day came about first. <laughs> That's, this is a, this is a really cool thing. I've seen a couple of people attempt this, but nobody's gotten this far. And that's got to take some real dedication to just wear a tool shirt every day. Right. <laughs> uh, so it must have been in February uh, when Tool played Tampa in 2022. And like always, it's such a great show, but it was just phenomenal. And I, I was like, you know what? I've got a stack of these shirts I've collected since I was a kid. You know, what if I just wear them all week? Right. Just stoked on the show. And uh, so it was a week, and all of a sudden I was like, hey, this is funny. Maybe I'll go for a month. And it just kind of rolled into it. So it was about a year, and I was talking with Guinness Book of World Records and kind of trying to make it a thing, and it just kept prolonging. And so here it is, 777, and that's the record that I want to kind of set right there. So you, so you said you talked to the Guinness Book of World Records? Yeah, I did about a few weeks before a full year, and they took a long time to get back to me and just basically had no interest in oh, my record. Bastards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I've seen a bunch of other records based on you know shirts, but they kind of said no one would try to beat the record, and I got a few friends uh, actually that are past a year already. Mm-hmm. More, more like just fun and I'm trying to think random chapter of my life. I was able to go to a few shows, five shows during uh, this span here, and just been amazing. Always inspired by them and owning my own tattoo shop. I can dress how I want and 
have just been having fun with it. I'm trying to, tool, you know. I'm trying to think of the other people that it might be doing. I think Joe Joey Crumbles might be one yeah, of them. That's my boy. <laughs> he was on the podcast at, at one point. I don't know the other ones, but he's he's creeping on you, I'm guessing. The the record. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so, we're in this together. It's all good. So yeah. Really. <laughs> um, how long until you wanna stop? So yeah, I'm kind of this is where I wanna be at. Seven 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 is kind of new numerology based. Um, obviously, the heptagram that you always see affiliated with Tool has the seven sides to it. Um, a lot of their music, instead of counting in fours, they count in odd numbers. Yeah, and seven repeats all the time. Um, let's see, like for that song "Third Eye," they even say "prying open my third eye." And that's like seven syllables. Okay. So just a, a lot of that, you know, Tempest is spelled with the seven. Uh, the last album had seven tracks for the main. The CD. main songs, yeah. Um, so you. So that's cool. And then I just went and seen him in Vegas. I seen you out there for a minute. Yeah. And uh, then the whole seven, 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 like lucky slot machine. Sure. You know, it just it just feels good to to have that be my my run. You know. Um, are you excited not to wear a tool shirt? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, I'll still wear them, you know, a bunch too, but <laughs> yeah. like going to the beach and different things. Like sometimes you just want to wear whatever you want to. So as much as it's been really cool, it's not like I need to do it forever. And, you know, I just did it for myself anyways, in a way. So, so, uh, been, been awesome. There's been a lot that's happened along the way. Um, I've, I've met a lot of new friends through the tool groups as well. And then in real life, you know, go to shows and visit different areas and see people. So it, it's been so cool. I've gotten people that sent me, you know, show shirts for free. Got people that hooked me up with some posters, just kind of supporting my random journey. <laughs> I, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been like out in the world just randomly and you see somebody with a tool shirt and you're like, okay, I got to stop him. I got to say something. Yeah. You're like, or just tool. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can't just let them walk by. Like there has to be right. some type of exchange because it's, it's just a thing. Like it's its own, it's its own group. It's its own little community. Even if you know, there's yeah. a, there's a handful of us and you know hundreds of us that are in the groups, but it, even when you're not in the groups, it's kind of just like a, a thing where it's like you're my kind. Oh yeah, it's not a cult, but it's definitely an understanding of of the art and the music that's different. You know. Yeah. Like all music is good, and just the way they they make their videos, the the live performance, you know, their whole experience is like just deeper. I've always felt like Tool is like an art project, you know, as much as it's a phenomenal band, very talented, you know, deeply written stuff. It's like so much about the art that stands out compared to like a different music video that just shows the band, you know. And uh, I won't spend too, too much more time on the shirts, but were there scenarios in which it was like super difficult for that day to to be wearing a tool shirt, like, or you had to like, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> like so one time. So I'm actually an ordained minister as well. So I can, um, marry, I can do weddings. Uh -huh. And I actually did a, a marriage for my friends and had a tool shirt on. Uh, it was, it was a white shirt, a nice Alex gray one. So it was kind of fitting. It was a beach wedding, but that was pretty, pretty funny. Um, they were wondering how I was going to show up and pull that off. So did you set up any rules for yourself? Like, is it, I just have to wear a tool shirt or like, does it have to be showing? Could it be under other things? Um, um it, it should still be showing, I Okay, think, you know, <laughs> um, not just an undershirt, but it, sometimes I'll wear a shirt, uh, a button up over it. That's still open. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, just every day I actually have a few tank tops. So just depending on how it's going to be, you know, just a shirt, 
but it either has their artwork on it uh -huh. or uh or it's somewhere officially from shows like i said i've been gifted probably over 10 shirts just showed up in the mail from facebook friends you know throwing down and and helping the challenge here that's it's awesome, awesome. Again, uh, about being in the tool community, there, there are definitely lots of them that are very supportive, and uh, we'll 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 do things like that. Send you stuff. I, I talked to this guy who does oh, yeah. this guy who uh, he plays guitar on TikTok, and he has a shit ton of followers. But they like sent him Adam Jones's you know guitar, like version of his guitar for free. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, good people everywhere, the, the people that I've met just through the groups. And then again, you know, in real life, sometimes trading posters. It's a really cool community that that I feel like most people have each other's backs. And, you know, then you see each other out in the in the line somewhere in a different state and everyone's like, hey, what's up, man? And so it's it's very cool, you know, yeah, it's a uh, part of it. It's a nice community. Definitely. And then so through that, I, I've posted a few times about the shirt, you know, and the shirt contest here that I'm doing. And uh, then I've had people that came and got tattoos based on finding me um, for that. Then they see my shop, they see my, my tattoo work. So I have one now that I'm working on as a whole back piece. That he, he followed me because of the tool shirt thing. And then now we've got like 21 hours in on this back piece. That's Alex Gray. Yeah, I've seen it. It's like the... Uh... It's like a, the upper body where, where it like comes out of the head and and like a big I forget the name of the the piece. Oh yeah, there's there's a few that I'm combining a few different paintings of his, uh, but the main one I think is called Oversoul that has like the the sun kind of face. Yeah. The moon is the throat, and then the earth is kind of the shoulders, and the, the torso there. Um, so yeah, let's get into your tattoo stuff because you're kind of. I mean, you have your shop, Third Eye. That's definitely a tool reference. Um, and then you have all the tool posters. And then you also do, uh, I wouldn't say you specifically do tool tattoos, but you do uh, tool tattoos probably a lot, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people kind of find me or, or search me out for it, but then it just works out. I do every style of tattooing, and, you know, that's always really fun when, someone's a, a, a super fan or whatever we can rock out and do a nice piece but then talk about all the cool stuff along the way you know i uh i had a tattoo artist that did this this arm right here and uh hated tool hated tool he and i was telling him like oh you know i want to get some tool in this blank arm he's like don't ask me to do it I I'm not doing oh any. <laughs> he's like I, I'm not doing any Alex Gray stuff. I'm not doing anything like. He's like I don't like Tool. Wouldn't play it in the yeah. shop. I'll, and need to say I don't go to him anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame, anyways. But uh, as far as tattooing Alex Gray or some of the other artwork, other artists, it is very intricate. It's it's complicated, you know. Yeah, that's uh, what so I think his it, deal was. As much as it's fun, it's also like, you know very specific and it's a big deal it's not easy so you gotta want a challenge to to take on something like that for sure do you remember doing your first tool tattoo it's been a while so i <laughs> i started tattooing in 2007 actually in vegas which is cool that's where you are right yeah yeah right so i was out there and then um i've had my shop here now since Tuesday. 2013 here in uh, Florida but I'm trying to think I mean I've done some Alex Gray a long time ago mm -hmm. out in California uh, so that must have been about 2010 or so when I really did my first one I did that I think it's a Bardo being the uh, 10,000 days cover but fully colored okay um, did it as a upper arm piece then I've done one of those they actually came out with the glass skull thing, um, but the the baby fetus skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have had that as part of the uh, triple face image by Alex Gray, mm -hmm. and I did one of those on on this guy's arm. But I've done a few uh, back pieces as well, and just been cool it when I'm just running a normal tattoo shop. But then when I get something that's right up my alley, I'm just like yes, you know. And, <laughs> 
and put in the time, but it's it's in sessions sometimes as well. Yeah, because so people just come in, get like a lateralist eye or an anima eye, and then sometimes it's like, hold up, you know, you're gonna be here in ten different times to get this done because of how intricate it is. Yeah, people don't r- really realize the the like blends of color and the small little lines, and they they sometimes look simple, but it but they're not. That that as well, and and just the different different layers that you have to do painting you can always put white like on top of any color you can stack layers differently where during the tattoo you have to do you know only the color where it goes so it is a lot harder to do like space and things like that like when you're painting you can just flick paint on it and now you have white stars you know yeah yeah, yeah. Um, whereas tattooing you're you're doing all the dark areas and working around every little light spot there is so and then putting something like alex gray just takes forever <laughs> and you got to do it in steps and heal a little bit and come back and get some more so that back piece what what how many sessions have you done so far um probably been like maybe six uh we're about 21 hours in and in total but we're pretty much there we got a little more details to pull off and a little more color but mostly like there's no blank spots anymore. Just need to go in and highlight and um, add a little more shadows, more details. And uh, I know that at one point, um, Alex Gray shared like some of your tattoo work. Yeah, that was so cool. Again, you know, just being an idol, someone I've looked up to since I first seen his art and to have him share it was just amazing. They're kind of keeping an eye on it and, um, they're posting along the way as I, as I work more. Can't wait to see it done. Oh, the but back piece cool. specifically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They really want to uh, see it in stages and then probably make a nice post at the end for the whole process of it, mm-hmm. just so that you do understand. It's not like you walk in and get something like that, you know, in one day. It's not yeah. Happen. No, and I I know it's about tattoos because I have a bunch, but. Uh, it takes a really long time. I mean, again, this sleeve is around 20 something hours, you know, a little eight hour yeah, session exactly. here, six, six hour session here, five hour session here. Yeah, it, it takes, right. a, it takes a long time. And it's dedication, not only to what you put on your arm, that it's going to be there forever, but sitting through it, you know, the, that it hurts a little bit. And then, you know, just coming in, it is, it does cost money. Yeah. But just to say consistently, hey, I'm going to do my sleeve. Let's get it done. Uh, but I'll, definitely commitment. I'll tell you, the, my, the worst part for tattooing for me isn't the gun. It's the fucking wipe. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the like, after a long time, yeah. this. Oh, I don't know what it is yeah. about that after, like, eight hours, but I'm like, stop touching me with that paper towel and punch you in the face. Right. <laughs> No, the wipe is the worst. The soap stings a little bit. Yeah. After a while, you just get sick of the same spot, and you you run out of uh, you know energy to to go through it. <laughs> um, so it's all good. We do like four hours at a time is is where most people seem to have enough. You know. I think that every time I've, especially with this arm, I think each one was at least six or seven hours per session. Which I think might have been a little too much, but I wanted to get it done. Like I, yeah. I, w- I want it done. Like let's do every other week or every couple of weeks for however long. Um, Definitely. D- so you not only do tattoos, um, you make your own prints. Yeah, I mean I make all kinds of uh, paintings, and then sometimes I make prints out of them. So all are these th- ones behind me? All these are my artwork here that are uh, different acrylic paintings, mostly acrylic. Sometimes I'll use markers or um, different mediums kind of experiment. One time I made a painting that was actually with tattoo ink. Um, oh, really? To see how it would float. Uh, I did one a couple weeks ago, and I had some coffee stains in it. So it's just kind of like fun art experiments sure. here at the shop. Um, but some of these ones here you could see kind of tool inspired aliens going on and um 
but I, I get inspiration from everything. And so some of them like this here is like a foil print that was an acrylic painting. It's so super you can awesome. You see the heptagram in there. You can yeah. see a little snake action. So what was it and, like? Uh, uh, so this is like a foil print of, you know, some artwork, like I said. How uh, another one that's kind of tool inspired with oh, wow. the heptagram with like a witch going on. Just cool how the light hits it. I had to uh, make my own kind of foil print and experiment with that. Then here's just another painting that I did. A cool owl. That is a cool owl. Just love seeing the reflections on that. As soon as I saw um, actually Tool was doing it, I was like, yep, let me see if I can get my art a little shine like that, right? So where did you get them printed at? And what was the process uh, of like that? So uh, my buddy on Facebook, I think he's in Philly. He actually printed these on vinyl. Mm -hmm. So it's much different than, than the posters we're used to, but... This one's pretty cool, Spaceman. It is pretty cool. Just cool uh, where I've made a limited amount, and then I sell them online a little bit. Then I've done other prints that are more photo paper. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, commission piece I did. Yeah, Jack. Over my third eye. But it's Jack Skelling then? Yeah. And That's that was someone that, again, seen me online. Um, with the tool shirt thing, then checked out my artwork and had a specific idea. Hey, will you paint this for me? Um, that's really cool. So like, I'll be around in the community and people in the grocery store will ask me, what day are you on and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then everybody follows my artwork, which has been really awesome. Um, always, always kind of wanted to do art since I was young. Got inspired by Salvador Dali. Uh, MC Escher, and then obviously all the tool artists are amazing. Alex Gray, Chad Zar, um, just always wanted to do art, and now I do art every day. It's really awesome. How long ago did you start your shop, and and what what was the process like? You know, having a brick and mortar and whatnot. Because I'm I'm sure you have other artists that work throughout the, out, out of there as well, and um, stuff like that. Yeah, oh yeah, it's uh, it's just two of us. We do have space for a third, but we like to keep it chill, and um, it's it's works out good with just the me and uh, my other artists are always in here, always booked up. We work like six days a week, and you know, you got to book out an appointment. So try to get walk-ins too, but it just be busy like that. So mm -hmm. basically, starting out, I already had a decent Facebook. Uh, following and friends and family that was supportive of my tattoo work and uh, so I had enough clients to stay busy and I opened up the shop in 2013 so it's it's been going over 10 years now and uh, just been great like I said I get to do art I get to uh, use Michael's art supplies as a tax write-off yeah <laughs> and, uh, you know, being being here in the shop, people can come in and see what I'm doing as opposed to maybe being in a, a private studio or, you know, in your garage or something where no one really knows that you're that you're even painting. Um, Facebook and social media, Instagram definitely helps everyone get seen more. But it is cool to have like an art gallery um, slash tattoo shop that just always changing up the walls and the ceiling is actually all painted up as well. I, so it's a cool little dojo here for me to keep on experimenting, you know. You're going to have to sh send me pictures of, of the ceiling. Uh, I would really oh, like yeah, to see right. what your ceiling looks like. So uh, we're both like into the in, into tool art and whatnot, but, but when it comes to posters, posters is kind of like a whole different game. I was in a... Uh, psychedelic situation and my <laughs> friend said hey watch this and i was like yo i already like like the songs but then i i seen it and i was like what is this and definitely just changed forever of what 
you know, a music video that's more like a short film that's disgusting and beautiful and just weird. And um, curious, you know? right? It, they always make you think, they're yeah. like, what? What am I looking at yeah. here? What am I supposed it's, to be feeling? It's so, like, alien, but yet you can somehow relate to this weird creature uh, or character. Whatever they're going through, you're, like, feeling as they are. Um, so just really cool. And then, then it gets into, like, the artwork of the posters. You know, there's all styles that they'd be coming out with, but some of them are just the right amount of dark that seems to match the music and, you know. Yeah, because you have... Really, feel that experience you know you have some bangers back there uh i know the dc the dc one that that addy one right in the middle i can i can see half of what is that the uh bojangles or or what's on the second row the the addy this guy here no the one yeah the brooklyn's dope too but the other side uh no the other way oh this one yeah this is duluth right yeah duluth uh, badass, man. Yeah, I've never even that seen, show. I've never even seen that one in person. I know there's a couple versions of that, but uh, then you have a Mystic Eye up there and whatnot. And so the Mystic Eye actually won in one of the groups. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it was like a like a forty dollar throw in, and then I said, "Holy shit!" You know, it was amazing when uh, the Duluth. That was back when no one even cared, man. You went up, everyone wanted shirts. You could get there halfway in intermission and still buy a poster. Like, it didn't matter. And uh, some of them, like Cleveland, that shit was like a war zone, man. Oh, yeah, I was I was in Cleveland as well. Yeah, it was just, like, so unorganized, and uh, it was wild, you know? So Yeah, then where it's, definitely, it's, where it's almost like a, I wouldn't say a riot, but it's definitely like a stampede. Yeah. You, you got to be ready. Sure. <laughs> yep. You can't. And it's funny because awesome being like the final show, just like Vegas, we just had um, just being like the grand finale of the U.S. tour. They they go so hard just kind of finishing it off for us, you know. Yeah. For some reason, I like going to those last shows. Like I said, I went to Cleveland. Definitely. I went yeah, I live in Vegas. So I was there. It's, it's kind of a bookend where it's like, all right. Yeah. Like they're done. And I got to see at least, you know, up until this point. I know they go to Europe. And definitely like Vegas, man. They they all went in. Maynard was a little sick, but he didn't miss a note. You could hear when he talked, but when he sang, he was on point. And everyone went like way harder than ever, I feel. Definitely Danny Carey. Man, every song was longer. Yeah. Every song was harder, right? That was yeah. fire. When when you're attacking your artwork, uh, do you do you attack attack it differently than you would attack a tattoo? I know you touched on like layers and stuff with art before. Uh, I'm just I curious. Mean, it's definitely a, a different process. A lot of tattoos will have an outline where a lot of paintings don't. Um, so it is about with any project, just where do you start? What are you going to do to uh, get the main shapes out? And then you're going to layer and bring things to life. You know, uh, when have you had anybody come into your shop that uh, like, didn't know you were a tool fan and then show up and see like your wall of posters. So some, some people right away, you know, they come in and they're like, Oh, that's so cool. Awesome. And then some people they're getting tatted for like an hour and then they're just like, what's tool? What is that? <laughs> what, what is tool? And I'm just like, Oh, it's like a really, you know, it's like a band, but again, it's like an art project. And uh, so you can just tell who gets it and who doesn't. But, um, for example, for uh, one show here in Tampa, I had extra tickets and invited some friends, and they seen the show. They heard the music before, mm -hmm. but coming to the show made them just go, what? That's awesome. And I feel like that makes you a fan instantly compared to maybe just hearing the songs, not understanding, you know? Yeah, I... Uh... Like nobody in my family was ever like a concert person or or even a tool fan at that that uh, light. But recently, for some odd reason, my aunt, who's like fifty something, like one day she was like, "Oh no, I'm really getting into tool for some reason," and I'm like, 
for real? <laughs> like she's a nurse That's and she's a nurse. And, oh, yeah. uh, in the Vegas show, I was like, well, you gotta go see him live. So we got her like tickets, like in the first bowl and, you know, had nice. a great seat. I was front row center, but I couldn't help it. Like every song looking back, like what's my aunt doing? Like she digging yeah. this. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's loud and it's intense, but it is, it is just powerful, you know, and, just something different the visuals they give you and the emotions that you feel yeah, it's definitely an, an experience and i think the experience is only uh enhanced by people like you and me where it's like there's a community out there you, you meet people at, in oh, places yeah. and it, even, it's even the poster line you're if you get there early and you're trying to get in you know you meet everyone in line you make friends with everybody there you know, I've barely seen any drama. I've just always been like, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you again, you know? And, and it's cool that we're like, we are the tool army, right? Yeah. And uh, so you have the the Alex Gray tattoo uh, that you're doing the back piece. Um, any other tool tattoos you've been working on lately? Um, I mean, I have a, a bunch that have been like, different logos, different designs. Um, I think right now that back piece is a big one. There's another sleeve that I did that's kind of coming around the arm that's more of a spirally geometric shape, mm -hmm. but it has some lyrics from Tool as well, some spiral out uh, lyrics. So some people just go simple like that. Um, I've had a few like tattoo specials. I think I did one when the album came out in 2019 okay i had like a flash sheet that was different uh video characters and poster art that i that i've tattooed so like even like this skull right here uh -huh. i would love to tattoo that that would be awesome right. i've actually done a, a small version of this on a guy's arm um the washington dc one yeah that came out really cool so always down for it i've got a few clients that are local that come back and get more. Sure. Um, and then there's people that that'll fly in or drive in from other states as well. Have you ever and done? Like I said, I'm I'm 90%. I'm just doing like normal, yeah. Um, every style tattoo, just clients all day. And then then I do. I love every style, but then when I get to my Alex Gray day, I'm like, yeah, let's go, you know. And and we turn the music up and just get to really get into it. It's awesome. How, um, how many portraits do you do? I'm always curious about tattoo artists that do portraits. So I've done a few. I mean, that's not like my main thing. And um, so I wouldn't do like super realism, like how sometimes you can see the sweat on their face. Yeah. Uh, but I can I can do a good portrait to where you can easily tell who it is. It's the right proportions. You know, it looks good, but it'll be a bit more simple. Um, I know I, I heard you talking about um, like screen printing in another podcast. Yeah. But just having the right shapes, even like a Banksy. Sure. Uh, it's very simple layered, but right away you're like, I know exactly who that is, you know. Exactly. Um, so there's definitely some, some uh, ways that you can achieve that without it being like a full color photo. Uh, Sam, I would rather do black and gray over like skin tones with tattooing i'm not really into that i like to kind of use brighter stuff or sometimes it'll have like a red light on one side of the face and a blue light on the other sure and that makes it cool but um i don't really work with the tans and the browns and and faces in tattoo work i i think i have I, a I, I used to have a rule at least until my last two t tattoo artists where i i would not get anybody's face uh, tattooed because uh, I, I was, uh, I don't want to say not trusting, but I just didn't want anybody to mess it up. I just wasn't, you know. And oh, right. I mean, everything has to be, you know, perfect is what we always strive for is that it's 100%. You know? And then just thinking too over time, your skin is going to move and change and stretch. And so things are going to are gonna become darker and kind of blur out where details on a face, if not done right, they can definitely change and like smudge out and just be too dark, you know? What about uh, cover-ups? Do you ever do any cover-ups? 
Oh, plenty. Yeah. I mean, some are simple, like a little tattoo. And some people say, hey, I want to rework. Like they already have a half a sleeve and they want it to be something completely different. This is what I want to cover up. Nobody wants to do it. (laughs) Uh, It's too dark, they said. And too blue. It just depends on the new design and that it's fitting, that it covers well um, and shares some similar shapes. Yeah. Some things like, I don't know, like a praying hands or like a white dove. It's like not a tattoo that's going to (laughs) cover. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just Um, get anything. Yeah. With, with the certain subjects, you just got to figure out what kind of theme that you want in the future and, and figure out where the shadows are going to blend in with that kind of an idea, you know, I just slap it right on top because then you'll just see right through it, you know? Yeah. Um, what do you think the most difficult, other than maybe doing Alex Gray stuff, because I don't know if people noticed, like a tattoo just isn't a tattoo. You have like traditional style, you have photorealism, you have, uh, I don't know, pop art. And what, like, what is your favorite style to, to, to tattoo? So, I, like I said, I like black and gray, but I love doing, you know, cool color stuff. I like doing really bold stuff, whether it's just black and skin tone sometimes. Um, Definitely realism is awesome, making things look like they're 3D, they're on your skin, you know, like a fish hook rip, ripping in your skin or something like that. Like having a clock that's really looks 3D or a spider, the dark stuff, the monsters. Sure. You know, s- skulls all day. <laughs> Have, but I, I do everything. I tattoo, you know, people that are like, uh, you know, pastors at church. Mm-hmm. And I tattoo, you know, police sergeants that come in. Uh, one guy got a, a huge dolly piece and he's like a local, you know, police officer. I was nice. like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> and uh, so just all walks of life, principals, teachers, nurses, ambulance, you know, people, um, everybody, doctors. It's crazy. Have you ever had to turn somebody away? Um, because, of the ID, because of the idea? Because yeah. of the idea. Sometimes the idea I will tell them straight up if I think it sounds stupid, you know, not to be like, uh, like, I don't want to be like mean, but like one guy wanted to on his face, he wanted to get his girlfriend's name uh-huh. like, stacked going down. And I just said, bro, that's a bad idea, you know? Um, and he really wanted it. He said, Oh, you know, we're so in love. And so I like, all right, if you want to come back in a week, we'll see what's up. I'll do it. I ended up seeing him the very next day in a, in a local store. And he just was like, man, you saved my life. Thank you for not letting me get it. The very next day, right? It's like we got in this big fight. And so uh, I, I put him on like a waiting time, like when you buy a gun or something. Sure. I just made him process it. And, and I'm, I'm sure that he's glad, like he said, that he didn't go through with it. Um, so sometimes as well, like you said, a cover up. If, if the idea is not going to work and I'm not going to do it, I'm going to come up with a better idea, maybe think about it more and, and come back at it another day. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. But definitely with names, I'll try to talk people out of it. Um, and I that... just really want it. You know, yeah. you know, Got to do your job too, right? So Chris, they want... recommend as much as I can and then it's their responsibility too, right? Right. You're like, I don't know if Stacy's going to love you in two years, but... What are you going to do? Hey, no, re- no regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> um, sure. And, and who, so who does your tattoos? Uh, do you- so my other, my other artist is uh, also my, you know, my partner in life. She's pretty much my wife and she does amazing tattoos as well. So there's times that I get on her schedule and uh, we tattoo each other a little bit. And then uh, I'm very proud of my daughter, which I know you asked who tattoos me. Mm -hmm. She's 12 years old now and has tatted like 20 times on real people. Um, She started, I don't want to say started tattooing, but she did her first tattoo when she was only four years old. Oh, wow. And uh, so she's like my little homie. And uh, let's see, she did this little strawberry here. Oh, wow. When she was only four years old. Then I got this dinosaur that she did when she was seven. That's pretty good. She recently, she just recently did these crazy eyes that kind of make a face. I see that earlier. 
earlier this year. So I'm I'm kind of full, but a lot of my space left is going to go to my daughter um, as she continues her art journey. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. So she uh, is yeah. very interested in becoming a tattoo artist, apparently, even at 12 years old. So, you know, she's really just an artist all around. She draws gotcha. like anime stuff and has, you know, worked on actual animating where now the pictures are moving on the mm-hmm. tablet and stuff. And I'm just blown away by what she's learning on her own and, and kind of taken to the next level. And she does art. She paints. Um, all her teachers in school, she got straight A's right now. I'm just, like, proud or whatever. But uh, <laughs> she's, she's killing it. And, like, even in science, they had to draw something because the, the project and the illustration and, and the teacher's like, wow, you're an amazing artist. So she's gifted with just being able to get her ideas out on paper. And, you know, tattooing is just something that's going to be there, too, um, as she figures out what whatever she wants to do in life. Um, I wouldn't want her to just tattoo. I understand what you're saying. You might as well tattoo as well, right? <laughs> right. It's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice uh, revenue stream, right? If you can do it well. Oh yeah, and just it's hard to to you know be an artist and pay your bills. So tattooing allows you to to do art every day, and uh, and keep the lights on. You know what I mean? What what has been your most difficult customer that you can think of? Hmm. Well, there's always what what do you say like the Karen? Okay. Um, but it's it's more just how people communicate what they want to get because we want to make everybody a custom tattoo. Obviously the easiest is someone that says, Hey, you know, there's a tattoo this big, this is what it looks like, this is what I want. You print it out and you do it, you know. What we strive for is making a custom piece that no one else has. But there's always people that want the thing they've seen on Pinterest or whatever, um, which is still nice, cute little tattoo. But then when we get into making something custom, you know, we're putting time into that design and, and making it just for you how you want. And then people make changes or let's say want to add, you know, let's put in all these names and dates like through the middle of this whole picture now. And you're just like, bro, really? <laughs> you know? So it's not really difficult when it comes to the tattooing, but sometimes just designing and, you know, figuring out what this person really wants and um, learning about them enough to, to make the, the right piece for them. And then in kind of capping what their expectations might be, because I've seen oh, that yeah. a lot with tattoo artists. And that's the best. You, you bring something in, they, they show me, and then I'm like, all right, cool, and it's not like it's always just a challenge, but you see the one that they like and you, you're like, okay, I can make that look better, you know? And then when they finally see it, they're just like, whoa, cool. And even being like diff- two different scenes, you can blend them and make them become one sleeve together, you know, scene change. Yeah. I mean, I have, uh, that sounds like that, you know, I have three different movies on here. I mean, there's like a back to the future scene. There's a uh, fight club. Like I said, I'd never get a face, but nice. then the guy, he like, uh, he's like, nah, we need to put Marla up there. I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, Fight Club is one of the best movies of all time, for sure. Yeah. And then Back to the Future, who doesn't love that? <laughs> exactly. And then everybody loves Batman. Um, Man, I'll have to find a picture. I did a DeLorean one time, a nice DeLorean tattoo back here. That was cool. That's awesome. Um Movie tattoos are are fun, in my opinion. Uh, again, Definitely. it's like it's like getting tool tattoos. It kind of is just like this is me. This is what I'm into. Um, oh yeah, recognizable. Like all, the, all the Tim Burton stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many in his category, but um, tattooing like that is awesome. How you were asking about portraits earlier, um, like an iconic face is always seems easier than someone's you know mom in this picture that's really old and blurry. And <laughs> yeah. so, Sometimes I'll, I'll kind of be like, you know, I'm not going to tat that. But you get like a Monroe or, a, you know, a Beetlejuice or something like that. And it's just like, all right, cool. Everyone knows what it's supposed to look like. Let's run it, you know. What uh, what advice would you have for up-and-coming artists and or tattoo artists? Hmm. I mean, just you got to just keep doing it, you know, every every time. 
you're going to learn something from that that painting or whatever style of art you're working on you know you you got to just keep keep moving forward sometimes you can be stuck in a painting and just trying to like keep fixing this small detail and when other people look at it they're not going to look at that corner as hard as the person working on it i think um so i had to learn that is just you work on it and then you're like all right it's done like you you do another one instead of trying to nitpick and just like be too harsh of your own critic you know sure just keep keep flowing and keep moving forward and then you look back and you're like man i did all these paintings in a year that's crazy you know yeah that's just awesome motivation and then half of it is you gotta have fun you know if you're not enjoying what you're doing if you're not putting your heart into it then you're just gonna you know kind of half be in it right so you just gotta dedicate and I was gonna say, and enjoy it, you know? it it then becomes a job right like just another yeah, job that that's why it separates you know as much as again i love to tattoo that's a, a single job you know the the person the client is my boss of that day and then i'm 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 working you know i'm mm-hmm. killing it i'm making art but i'm like being a professional and i'm giving them the best product i can um when i'm painting it's like it's just me and the canvas it feels a lot more like freedom that I'm just, you know, in the zone. And it's something goes through where it's just peaceful, you know, it's, it's awesome. feels good. And that's where it should be. Instead of trying to like force it, there's going to be days that you want to and days that you don't want to do art. Yeah. Just feel that lightning bolt and you get to it or you say, you know, maybe I'll take a day off, you know? Do you have any, any rituals when it comes to like art? Or even tattooing, like something that gets you into the headspace? So sometimes I have some experiences that will trigger ideas or visions and, you know, get the vision out on something that's real. Definitely just get inspired, get struck by lightning. And then during the painting process, you know, there's always good music involved. Just got to be... And I've got like a separate room, not where I tattoo, that I that I have my, my easel and just crank up the music and get into it. Start nice. layering, you know. So music is a big part of like getting you in the headspace. Oh, definitely. I'm I've always played drums and I've always been like a music based person, but art goes right with that. Yeah. You know, decorating um space versus decorating like the air is music right so one of my last questions is but when you start putting those posters and frames and putting them on your walls they're they're like i don't know to me they're almost like badges of honor like i i got this it's dope i got the artist to sign it this is yeah this is like who i am i guess or this is what i this is what i'm into this is this is me putting you know i mean i didn't do the art but this is me you know, I, I, people come to my house, there's posters everywhere, just like your shop. It's kind of like, this is what I'm about. Um, right. Well, I, it, it's <laughs> like you said, it's not like a badge, but it is that way better than a souvenir. You know, it's yeah. the experience that you had is way different. Even when someone says, whoa, that's cool looking. Um, they don't they don't feel the bass drum when you're in the fourth row and you're just like blown away you know <laughs> they think it looks cool but like the person who attended that show that that brings home the art maybe still tripping looking at it later that night and just going damn it's real right was that real you know yeah and so definitely it's it's that show attended um you know experience that that you can kind of be reminded of and try to get at the next show you can right right and then, and even with ones that aren't, it's also, you know, getting into the artists that did it, supporting them, like pushing them out. Cause I think that's one great thing about band posters specifically. And specifically what tool does is they, they use all different types of artists and, and putting people's names out there. Oh yeah. I mean, it's great because you have like classic artists like Chubb Czar and Alex Gray um, that have worked with music videos and stuff where you're like, okay, they're, you know, 
they're definitely like a part of this thing. And then there's other artists that are, you know, friends or other artists that Adam Jones liked. He just said, hey, let me put you on, you know. So as much as this shirt here, this is like the torch, right? Yeah. So I feel like because Tool is has been around forever, um, as they're getting older, musically and artistically, they're passing the torch a bit, and that's really mm. cool that they're putting other people onto their their artist list. And some of them, you know, that's their their claim to fame is that people knew them because of the new Tool poster that came out. Yeah, you know, like Mike so Gamble. It's very cool that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy seems awesome. I've seen his interview, too. Mm -hmm. And just saying, you know, a, a fan that that grew up with it that said, hey, you know, I I, I collected posters and put push pins in them because I didn't even care. I was a kid. Yeah. I have one from 10,000 Days that has push pins in the corner. And I'm just like, whatever, cool, it's the poster. Yeah. And, like, the newer ones are like, you could never do that. You know? <laughs> and it's just, just different, but... The, the quality of the print and then the array of different talented artists. Um, just amazing where that would be a dream to have my art be a part of it, you know? Well, I think, I, I, you may not believe this, but I think it already is, right? Uh, you're in the communities. The people that are into the band know you, know your stuff. Like, you're, you're, you're tattooing on people, so, you know... Your, oh, yeah. your art hasn't see that. become a, an official tool poster, but, I mean, your your art is in the community and it's being experienced by the people that, that would experience a tool poster anyways. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, so. thank you. But <laughs> I, I also actually posted one, um, and I had Photoshopped in the, the tool logo on it, made like a fake poster. Sure. Um, some, I've done that before, too. Hated, hated on that, and some people... Loved it. Some people said it was amazing and actually got attention from the band. Um, and it was more like, hey, you can post this, but you can't use the word. Mm -hmm. And then if we could talk about something, but um, nothing official. Sure. It was cool to be contacted by management, even if it was just like, Chill. bro, you can't, <laughs> you can't do this, you know? So it was because of all the positive feedback and how many people thought that that poster was real or you know believed that it was mm -hmm. uh that, that was still kind of cool that it yeah. got their attention i i would take that as a win as as well which yep. which uh, so, which piece of art was that if you don't mind me asking um that one that kind of uh got that attention it was like an angler fish it was like an underwater really bright kind of scary looking fish and i just felt it worked Nice. With the whole learn learn to swim, undertow, yeah, uh, the the song bottom, anima. They got so many, uh, flood, very water based. Yeah, they, there's a lot of water based uh, songs and art in 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 Tool. Oh yeah, and I actually have a a different series of paintings that I've made in the last year. It's kind of like Florida style fish. Um, and, and underwater creatures. And I'm, I just started making a few for friends and people loved them and started buying them. And I called that series learn to swim as well. So nice kind of all inspired throughout it. Um, just growing up with the music and couldn't stop drawing, couldn't stop making art. Nice. Uh, Brad, do me a favor, tell people where they can find you for tattoos Find your art online, those prints. Where where can everybody buy some of your stuff and, and get some of your art? Awesome. Yeah, so my shop is Third Eye Tattoo. The website is www.thirdeyetattooshop.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and I'll, I'll give you guys all the links there. But definitely check out my artwork. It's all different styles. And as much as I'm here about the, the tool shirt incident, I'm also just a, an artist yeah. and a fan and love this community. So it's glad to be glad to be a part of it. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, again, I think you're a staple in 
I, I, I hope that I'm, a, I'm getting to be, a, you know, ingrained in the in tool community as well. Like, you know, you see, like say, you see everybody at shows, you meet people and I think I'm the only one doing interviews, right? <laughs> so you, no, you hope so you're making cool. Spiral Out is a great name that um, doesn't even have to be directly related, but it's just a part of everything growing, you know? Yeah. And I've seen I've seen a few that you've done with some awesome art, artists from, from way back, too. So hopefully you can keep getting in with different underground, you know, connections, right? That's the goal. Just, just all the art that comes hand in hand with that spreads and makes a huge community. Yep. More than just, hey, I went and seen this band, you know. It yeah. is uh, just a lot going into it. Their, their whole team that makes the live show. But then again, all the artists that they keep putting on and uh, spreading the word and just keeping art real. As much as they're making AI huge, everybody's got an app that can make an image in five seconds. You know, keeping real artists. Uh, is is important, I think, as a, a human situation. I I could I couldn't agree more. That's why we need people like you. I don't think uh I don't think AI can tattoo on skin yet. Um, oh no! <laughs> it, when when they make that possible, it's gonna be like a printer that you have to be strapped down into. You couldn't really make a sleeve work. Yeah. Yeah. You like can always need someone uh, to physically etch it into you as a human you know yeah tribally. Uh, i just remember that, like that <clears throat> tattoo from starship troopers where like he, it's yeah. just like a scan like Brr. uh that's no yeah. fun that's like no fun or something. Uh, yeah you could do that no it is tribal and it's just like that's that's the part of the community um where where you know i'm i'm the the tattooer yeah awesome. you you put things on people for life <laughs> well oh, yeah. for the most part Right. Yep. So thank you, thank you, Brad, for coming on. Thank you for tattooing cool art. Um, I'll put all your links out with the episode, and you know, I I, I wish you nothing but uh, success and growth. Hey, thank you so much for having me, and uh, shout out to all the fans out there, and shout out to Tool for inspiring us. You know, keeping us motivated, and you know, and we'll rock. And we'll see if anybody attempts to beat your 777 days of wearing tool shirts. Seems unlikely. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> hey, bring it on. Right? It's all good. It was fun. And like I said, all the community, all the, uh, I mean, clients and friends and gifts along the way. It was fun. Yeah. Love it. Thank you, Brad. Spiral Out Podcast is produced by me, your host, Chris West, edited by me, researched by me. Uh, everything is pretty much just done by me. Uh, go to our website, spiraloutpod.podbean.com. Follow us on Instagram at spiral underscore out underscore pod. Facebook, Spiral Out Podcast. And again, if you want to see some of the images associated with this episode, Click the link in the show notes and it'll take you there. Again, thank you for listening. Spiral out. Pod dismissed. Wait, that's another show. <laughs>